We welcome you all back to the second half of our Central East Division contest. We will now have the humorous speech contest, and I hope that you all are enjoying your food. Try to keep it to a low roar for our contestants, and also try not to be eating when they're doing jokes, because they're going to be hilarious, and I don't want anyone to be rushed to the hot. <laughs>
Ava Tony Snyder, and contestant number five, Dan Friedrichs. We're going to start with, of course, contestant number one, Ben and Don. Contestant number one, Ben and Don. Dear contest master, dignitaries, guests, sorry I'm reading the book here using humor in the speech, so I'll be with you guys in just a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who here growing up has had a nickname? Anyone? Awesome. Nicknames are great. I never had one. Uh, my brother, his name is Andrew, his name was Chunky, because he was kind of a big guy growing up. Uh, my sister Julie. <clears throat> date myself here, we called her Pebbles, because <laughs> my mom would go to hair, nice little ponytail, look like Pebbles, you know, pretty Pebbles, pretty stones for those who know her. But anyway, I never really had a nickname that really stuck until I got to the second grade. I had this lovely teacher, her name was Miss Khan, and her and I really did not get along very well. I can't imagine why. I'm a nice guy, you know. So I, I, I don't know what, what the deal was, but she found a very special name for me. It is Loco and La Cabeza. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are Spanish in here, crazy in the head. <laughs> now, innocent me, how can I get such a name? Like that. Seriously. But there was this one time. <laughs> but there was one time. In second grade, beginning of the year, the teacher, uh, Ms. Khan, sends these letters home to the students saying, please, parents, make sure your children does not wear any strong perfumes, colognes, you know, anything with strong odor because I'm very allergic. I thought it was weird. I go, how many second grade boys are going to school wearing fruit? <laughs> how many boys are going to be wearing old spice? Seriously. You know? How many girls are going to be running around wearing Charlie? Oh, I say, y'all know what I'm talking about. Or, or Lady Stetson. How far back am I going to Okay. So, it was odd. That's fine. You know, my parents obliged. So, one day, I am talking to my girlfriend, Maddie. Although she didn't know she was my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> We're, she sat right behind me. We're talking, just having a grand old time. Laughing, just, God knows what we were talking about. But we were just having a great time. And Ms. Khan just looked at us and said, keep it down over there. So we started writing notes instead. We quiet. But we but we were still laughing about what we were passing back and forth. And she goes, Benny! This is what they used to call me, Benny. When I was younger. She said, come up to the front of the class and bring your work. I'm like, go up to the front of the class. I get my work. So why don't you go ahead and read to the class what you've done so far? But my paper was blank. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything because I was talking to my girlfriend. Although he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> so, it was really great. So I'm going back to my, my desk, red face. You know, the kids are laughing. I'm embarrassed. I'm sending her this comment. She's not going to get away with that. <laughs> Next day, I'm ready. I get, get dressed, I'm ready to go, and I go into my parents' room, <laughs> and I go right up to the dresser, and there's this lovely bottle. This bottle was shaped like a panther, just like leaping out. <clears throat> and I had no idea where it was. I opened the bottle, it didn't have a little spray thing under, it was just a regular open bottle. So I just kind of poured. <laughs> in my hand, and just, oh, rise up. 
Oh man, <laughs> it was the most horrible stench ever. It was just bad. Oh my goodness. So, I oh, gotta go. I run to school, I'm going to class, uh, or to, to the schoolyard, and I walk to my friends, hey guys, how's it going? Like, oh, what's going on in there? They're like, damn, you can get in trouble. I'm like, I can finally say, I don't care. <laughs> Go to class, <clears throat> sit down on my right there, row here, right there in the corner, teacher walks in, who is that? And she runs to her desk and grabs a mat, like a painter's mat, just, who, who, who's poor perfume? And of course all the kids just point, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get in trouble. I knew what was going to happen. I'm fine. What I didn't take into consideration was that they're going to call my mom. <laughs> I can handle principal trouble. Mom trouble is a whole other kind of trouble you just don't want to deal with. <laughs> so mom had to come pick me up. It was not good. <clears throat> it was probably one of the worst spankings I've ever had. Still kind of feel it today. <laughs> and I have many to compare thereafter. <clears throat> so, go back to school the next day with my mom. Can make me apologize to the principal, apologize to the teacher. <clears throat> okay, I don't care. I'll be sure I won't do it again. Until I got in trouble again talking to my girlfriend. She still doesn't know she's my girlfriend yet. So, <clears throat> Carlos is going to be in trouble again. She moves madly into the other side of the room. I'm not happy. She puts me in the corner. I'm not happy. I'm getting back. I promised I wasn't going to do any clone or anything, but I'm sitting there, and I get back. And then it came to me, physically. A little thunder from down under. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, who knew such an aroma could come out from such a small little boy? <laughs>
I'm single. I just need a show of hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a small crowd. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. That's not a bad thing, because I do want to speak directly to you. And married people, I'm sure you all already have the answer to my question. <laughs> Years ago, my best girlfriend's granddaughter used to always say, there's a top for every pot. One day, I just happened to ask Mrs. Porter, Mrs. Porter, what does that mean, a top for every pot? She says to me, baby, it just means there's somebody out there for every pot. I said, okay, I can understand that. After all, my mother married my father. <laughs> my grandmother married my grandfather. I knew plenty of married people. However, I was single. And I couldn't understand why I was single. You know, everybody's been in some sort of relationship at some point in time. Some good, some not so good. I didn't do very well with that. But that's not a bad thing. It just let me know, hey, you make some good choices in life, you make some not so good choices in life. But I'm okay with you, right? <coughs> but this whole dating thing, I can't do it. I can't do it. Why can't I do it? <coughs> I think that I feel ridiculous. I think I may be a little bit too old for it at this point. But then one day I was out and I saw a really mature couple. Neither of them were married, but they were together. And they looked like they were having a great time. And I said, wait a minute. If they're together, why can't I find somebody? Where's the top to my pot? <laughs> I'm still looking. But let me share something really very interesting with you. One day, my daughter was visiting, and she happened to uh, find a website, a couple of them. She comes into my room and she says to me, hey, Mom, uh, I just want to let you know Mr. Wiggins gave you a wink. So who is Mr. Wiggins? So she shows me on her cell phone this picture of a gentleman, big grin on his face, wearing a Cubs cap, Cubs jersey. He was at a baseball game looking like he was having a good time. She says, he's been winking at you on Christian Mingo. I said, um, I didn't know that I was on Christian Mingo, so don't you enlighten me, my dear. And she did. And she also told me that I was on Match.com. <laughs> and she's been answering everything for me. I couldn't believe this was happening to me. My daughter put me out there and I didn't know anything about it. Then it made me start thinking again about my top for every pot. I asked myself this question as I was cleaning out my kitchen cabinets. I'm getting a new kitchen by so I'm cleaning out the kitchen cabinets, and I found that some of the tops didn't match the pots that they were sitting in. And it was just kind of a mess in there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to throw out every pot that is no longer useful. Thought I'd share a couple of my findings with you. <laughs> Excuse me. First off is this lovely little pan right here. It's kind of thin, hollow. It's really only good for steaming vegetables. I likened this to a fellow I once dated. <laughs> All nice and shiny on the outside. But when it comes to really cooking those heavy duty items like my lasagna sauce, he's he wasn't worth it, and this pot wasn't worth it either. I could only do uh, boiling, steaming.
steam and that type of thing in it. I thought about throwing it out, but then I said, no, it has an insert and a really good top that matches. I didn't bring the top because it goes actually with something else. And so the top sort of serves a dual purpose. <laughs> Ever found a guy or a girl that you met that kind of serve a dual purpose? <laughs> <laughs> So that's this top. I decided I'm going to keep this one. Now here's a clear top. Nice, right? You can see whatever's going on right inside of it, pretty transparent. I feel like that sometimes when I'm, you know, trying to find out if this is the right guy until it gets maybe a little too close. And like this top, actually, you can't see it from here, but I broke this top. I dropped it on the floor, and it's got a sharp edge to it. You have to be a little bit careful when you're touching it because you might cut yourself. You know, some of us have been in a bad relationship. <laughs> got some sharp edges on you. <laughs> You might cut somebody if they say the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> this top is actually like that. <clears throat> and guess what? I'm not keeping this top. As perfect as it looks, it's got a slight jagged edge right here. And because I have enough tops that really do match, and this was just something random that I had used for another pot that I've already grown out. I'm not keeping it. So, my decision is there's a top for every pot, and I maybe haven't found one, but I'll still stay in the game. for fun and profit. 
because if they weren't paying me, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you need to realize is that conference calls can be fine, but you need to minimize distractions. Does anybody here work in a cubicle environment? Yeah? People walk by, you're in your conference call, and this is what I don't understand. They'll come up and <laughs> Why are you whispering? I can't hear. So the first thing I like to do when I am on a conference call is I want to send the signal loud and clear. I'm working. Not surfing the internet. I'm working. So I put on this headset. And while I'm tempted to say, would you like fries with that? <laughs> I'm an adult. And this is my first signal that I am busy. I'm working. And the second thing I do is I do not make eye contact. <laughs> That's another pro tip. You can use this on public transportation on your way home. Don't make eye contact with anyone who is stumbling by. If you're wearing this headset and they're like, hey, 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 I'm not paying attention to you because I'm seriously paying attention to this conference call, not playing games on my phone. <laughs> and that's the other thing you need to be aware of when you're surviving a conference call. I like to minimize distractions, which means I can't get on the internet. I can't check my email and, oh, so help me instant messaging. It's really good if I'm not in a meeting. But when I'm in a meeting, that little flashing light just swirl. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can, if you've got the power, just turn it off. Hell turkey. Don't have your instant messaging on. Don't have your email on. Make sure that you are putting on your game face, it's helmet. Maybe put in a noise canceling earphone on the other side. I do that sometimes because there are people on conference calls around me. It gets a little loud. But if you're not on the internet, and you're not checking your email, and you're not on instant messenger, what are you going to do? You can't just stare a hole into your com I mean, the light, the light, it's very bad for your eyes. You might want to stop doing that. <laughs> so some of the things I have decided to do is I've taught myself macrame. <laughs> I have. While I am on the phone, and you would be surprised how much it helps my memory. Just having the little Boy Scout knots, I made myself this lovely bracelet on a conference call today so I could wear it here tonight and tell you. <laughs> while I am trying to get that not just right. <laughs> Another thing I like to do while I am on the phone is I've taught myself a couple of things. I mean, I'm a project manager. That means I juggle people, resources, and time. I also contact you. <laughs> so while I am on the phone, just waiting for people to talk, 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 I mean, it's an hour-long conference call. It really should be a half hour. And God help us, you know, if you can get it done in half an hour, it really should be an email. Maybe I should check. <laughs> but no, while I'm sitting there just waiting for the conference call to go through all of its paces, I can sit there and I can just balance, think, and you'd be surprised how much just a little physical activity helps you focus and keeps you from getting distracted. But occasionally, <laughs> I do lose track of what's going on. So here are the tips. Here are my secrets. If you are ever on a conference call, and if you get off for just a second to go pick up your juggling ball, you jobs. And someone on the phone is saying, Jessica, what do you think about that? <laughs> Busted. <laughs> that never happens to me, by the way. But if it did, what I would say is, oh, you know, there's been a lot of rich discussion. I've been taking lots of notes. Could you just repeat that question for me? <laughs> or another thing, if it's the end of the meeting and you're going around and you're just, hey, if everyone could just help me by reciting their action items before we get off this call to hold ourselves accountable, that means I really only have to pay attention at the beginning and at the end. <laughs> so these are my tips to survive a conference call for fun and profit. Make sure you look the part. Get your McDonald's headset going if you have to. Make sure you minimize distractions because you are focused, laser focused on your macrame. 
<laughs> or whatever tool, whatever amusement you've got going on, because being distracted and keeping your focus, that's the name of the game. And this will help you survive conference calls for fun and profit. <laughs>
la 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peyton Manning. Yeah, that, 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 that song. I knew right where to go, and I got my insurance. And after insurance, I was all set. I needed to get something to eat. And I didn't know what quite to get. And I heard the, I was in a trance. What was I going to hear? Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Special <laughs> lawyers don't upset us. I want the burgers. Get two big whoppers, fries, shake the whole bit. And after that, I said, I needed some dessert. What can I get after that? Let me go to Walgreens. I go here. Give me a break. Give me a break. And break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> <laughs> I got Kit Kat. That was great. So after I was done with that, I decided, nah, I'm gonna go and, and get some. I have to go get some food for dinner. It was a big, busy day. And while I'm in the in the supermarket, I, I what can I get tonight? I get hamburgers for lunch. Maybe for dinners I should get. Oh! I wish I were an Oscar Mayer winner. <laughs> that is what I truly like to be. <laughs> and then I heard the song. It says, Lippies, Lippies, Lippies at the table. table, table. You will like it, like it, like it on the table. Canned beans! Ah, half ounce of beans. That's perfect. So I got all that. But by that time, my stomach was stuck in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but never fear. I heard another song. Fizz. Fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Ah, a little alka ah, Once I got that, I was set, and I went home. But I was all wired up. Can you blame me? That was a lot of stuff to go through. But I wasn't tired, and I needed to go to bed. And then I heard, take some eggs to my Safe and restful sleep, sleep, There it is. I hope you enjoyed my fun-filled jingle spell adventure. But I have to caution you. You need to be aware, lest you fall under the hypnotic effects of jingle spells. Oh, wait, I hear another. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Judges complete their ballots and until the ballots have been collected by the ballot counters.
Thank you. 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 Thank you
I'm going to ask you all the same questions as well. Yes, I don't need <laughs> How long have you been in Toastmasters? About 120 days. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, See, that's my time. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. 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 It's just about four months, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> what club are you representing? BMO Harris Toastmasters. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 
Well, I have two. Uh, one is, is genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration by Thomas Edison. And one that is a to should be a Toastmaster quote is, do you ever hear people say, better late than never? Did you ever hear that? I heard somebody say, Say that I said that to somebody one day, and he said, "No, better never late." <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for participating today, and here is your certificate of participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh. I would like for her to go ahead and tell us what it is. Go ahead. Amy. Well, my favorite quote is one by Les Brown. It says, "Don't make someone a priority that makes you an option." Oh. Oh. Now, thank you all so much for participating. You may be seated. Well, was that a contest or what? Speechcraft around the district. Speechcraft is a workshop series run by a club for non-members. Six, maybe eight meetings. There are ten lessons. The point of Speechcraft is to spread the word, attract new members, grow your club, grow your members. There is a flyer which your district director, your, I'm sorry, your division director has, your area director has. If you are a club officer and your club does not have as many members as you would like to have, hound your area director to learn more about speech craft. Madam Contest Master. <laughs>
Why? Because it was introduced to me when I joined Toastmasters April 2020. <coughs> it is called the Club Ambassador Program. This program gives you the opportunity to visit three clubs outside of your home club. You will complete this beautiful form <laughs> that I will leave out on the table so that you can get it, but it should have been shared previously. You fill out the top portion of the, the information about the club that you visited. One of the officers will sign off on it, preferably the president or the vice president however, of education. However, any other officer can do it. Three unique things about that club, and you sign it, and then you email it to me. <laughs> Just as Iqbal has already told you about the fall conference, guess what else happens at the fall conference? If you will email me three of these forms, you get to walk the red carpet too. <laughs> <laughs> they will announce your name. You will walk up there and you'll be excited. Why? Right? Because you learned it from me. <laughs> Yay! 
now I'm going to <coughs> turn it back over to our distinguished division director of Central East. And I really want to make sure I thank everyone for having me as the contest master today for the very first division contest for Central East Division.
So get that finger on that website and go ahead and register. Price goes up after the 24th, so register now. The website is up and running. Go out there, take a look. Take a listen. There's something out there for you. Now just correct them. I mean, <laughs>